Good evening, everyone. Before I start, I just want to tell Sandy, I may be redoing my bathroom, but I didn't marry my mistake. And I'll tell you exactly how. So my mom always used to tell me, never dislike something too much, because that's the very one thing that's going to come and bite you on your shoulder. Shoulder, not butt, not ass. Because we are mothers, and we don't use vulgar language like butt, or ass, or shit, or shut up. We never do that. Now, my family has had six generations of pure Mathur genes. And my dad carries that legacy rather seriously. For those of you who are not familiar with Mathurs, <laughs> let me just tell you a bit about them. They're fairly honest, God-fearing people, but with wallflower qualities. So you won't notice one till one has picked up a mic or hosts a TV show. <laughs> That's when you really notice them. Most of them are non-vegetarians, but they may eat only mutton or chicken. Because you see, fish is too fishy. And prawns look like leeches. And crabs look like sea monsters. So you play it safe, and you'll be fine. You'll do just fine. Um, that's not to say that uh, everything's bad about them. But we were, when I was growing up, we were never allowed uh, to take any uh, you know, life-threatening uh, decisions or do anything life-threatening, like do a summer job or maybe um, you know, uh, ride a motorcycle or shout at a neighbor. You couldn't do that. But an acceptable hobby to take up was singing, but only if you could use it as a mathur singing function, because music, that's not a profession at all. I mean, who does that? If you could sing a bhajan on Janamashtami, <laughs> that's all good. So that was great. But having said that, again, we were always encouraged to um, you know, pursue very ambitious, path-breaking career opportunities like um, engineering, medicine, CA, or an MBA, which is exactly what I did. And I came out all shined up, primed Martha Trophy-like. Oh, one last thing. Did I not tell you that Mathurs only marry Mathurs? <laughs> That's the law of the jungle. It is unheard of for any Mathur to look outside the community for a match, even if they are Srivastavs or Saxenas, who are similar, but not the same. But that's kind of cool, because then girls don't really have to change their surname. You know, they don't have to change their passports or bank details or anything. It's all status quo. You just pick up your bags, and you go and live with another family, which is exactly like yours. Because in the Mathur world, of course you live with your in-laws. Who would not? So exactly at a similar point in my life, when all this was contemplated, I decided to step out of the box, the Mathur box, into the big bad world of television, which in my dad's book was uh, immediately indicative of psychotropic drugs, parties, bad women, drinking, sex, smuggling. You know, Zina Taman and Parveen Babi had really wrecked it all for us. <laughs> they completely killed it. The only trade-off was, that I would marry a Mathur, and as if there was any choice. That was the whole thing. Now, my dad, um, he looked, he, I mean, it's not like I was not an indulged love daughter, I was. But the real purpose of my life was to find a Mathur boy and go to Vrindavan every month and pray. <laughs> but according to my dad, I was already falling stock in the marriage market because I was doing television. So he promptly announced that he had found me the Mathur catch of the century. So, I went and met Vineet Mathur <laughs> from Boston, who came to see me with 13 of his family members. But the thing that hypnotized me was his mom's eyebrows. They were so thin and slanted, all right? And we all watched in fascination how she ate a pomfret, eyes and everything, with a fork and knife. Completely, full thing. But in my head, I'm seeing Mr. Spock from Star Trek talking to me in Vulcan, saying, when are you going to leave your job on TV? My, I could see my dad's smile just do, die a little slow death. And that was it. And oh, I forgot to tell you about Vineet Mathur. He was like a mongoose on a sugar high. And he had this crazy voice. I have a kingfisher. That's what he said. I think that's what he said. It sounded like I'll have a kingfisher. And he kept telling me about what a great pool he had in his backyard and that he went bowling every month. <laughs> so fun. He was like a cold shower on legs. My dad didn't wait for me to tell him what I thought. He said, Min Min, I didn't like the way she ate the pomfret. 
who has a fish at tea time? Out. So that was that. By now, my dad has got a little, pr he's feeling a little proud of my achievements in television, but that's also could have been because I was hosting Tol Mol Ke Bol in a nalli silk sari and not doing late night parties with bad boys and bad girls, right? So one day I knew I was in trouble again because I get a call from him from work. And I know that voice of his when I know someone's sitting with him because it goes something like this. Hi, Min Min, what are you doing? Nothing, dad, I'm laying the table for mom. Shooting? Oh, good. Uh, no, dad, I'm at home with Amir Khan. Fantastic. Very good. Calm karo, calm karo. Bita, I am sitting with somebody, very nice gentleman, Ajay Bahadur, that's his son. And uh, he's from IIT Bombay. Good boy, you meet him. So, Ajay Bahadur it is. Ajay Bahadur it is. Who is again like a sleeping pill in shoes. Firstly, he looks like Abe Diol. Garibo ka Abe Diol. Okay? <laughs> Townie, banker. Townie. Oops, I hope he's not sipping beer somewhere here. Alright, sorry. Apologize, but it didn't matter because he had the sense of humor of a potted plant. And he hadn't seen a movie in his entire life. I could see my life flat lining before me, all right? But my dad, who had begun to get the drift by now, tells me, Min Min, I don't like him. He has an unmarried sister. I think they are trouble. I'm like, good dad, you're taking really good notice of what I want. Now, my CPR came in the form of Kabir Khan, all right? He was very unlike any Mathur or unmathur boy that I'd ever met. He was a documentary filmmaker, not an engineer or a banker. He was a Khan, not a Mathur. He was uh, uh, an atheist, which in the Mathur book is even worse than being a Muslim. He had traveled to all the war-torn hellholes of the world, and I'd only been to capital cities. <laughs> he uh, was in the middle of a very messy breakup with a cuckoo psycho girlfriend, <laughs> and I was still seeing Mathur virgin boys. But love is love, and our worlds met. But much like Shah Rukh Khan in DDLJ, I had decided that I'm not going to go for escapist love, right? I'm not going to be the one who lives up to my dad's stereotype. Um, by this time, my dad, of course, had set the bar on Mathur boys so high that there are no fish in the net. There is nobody. So he has set his sights on a guy called Vikram Khanna, who sounds like a Rajma-eating mother's boy, I feel. <laughs> Meanwhile, I meet, make him meet Kabir, and uh, immediately his response is, Kabir, what beta? I said, I don't know, it's kind of vague, I forgot. In the next one year, Kabir spends the year wooing my dad with books, with chats on world history, with travel stories, with politics and everything. So once, after some time had passed, my dad, is telling, my dad comes to me and says, beta, this Kabir is a very nice boy, why aren't you considering him? And I'm like, but dad, did I not tell you? I'd be like... He's Muslim, he's Pathan, we are Mathos. This is never going to happen, right? No way, I'm not interested. My dad, my old man, he's nobody's fool. He knew that he'd been duped into falling in love with a Kabir Khan. He became very silent. And for very, very many days, weeks, he just thought and walked and thought and walked till one day he came up to me and said, I'd like to meet Kabir's mom. Now he fully braced himself to meet one Sharara clad, <laughs> Pan chewing, ghost cooking Ammiji. And we meet this rather stately, gorgeous, radiating woman who tells us that his, her neighbor is a toxic bitch. And uh, I might like to mention that she referred to me in that entire meeting by the name of his ex girlfriend. She's right here, my gorgeous mother in law. So um, that's probably how the story ended. I did marry the Pathan. I did join MTV. I do wear short, shiny dresses. I do party at discos with bad boys and bad girls. Most of them are here tonight. Um, but my fan, my father is now my biggest supporter and our biggest fan. But the, but the thing that gets me is that at every Mathur get-together that we have, after he fills his glass with ice and scotch, his favorite line is, Khan ho ya khanna, farak to sirf N-A ka hai. And that means not applicable. Thanks so much, guys, for going through this. And I'd just like to uh, say a very big thank you to Kriti, who is doing an absolutely wonderful job. Thank you. I'm, I have dibs on this one. <laughs>